Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Kicking it off. That's right. The first official podcast episode of the year on the Movie Dojo podcast with your boy Preston, Fat Samurai Guy. We're, we're, do, we're doing it live, baby. That's right. With director, filmmaker, filmmaker, he's done it all. Richard V. Somes. How are you, my friend? Uh, I'm very fine here. We have a good weather here now in the Philippines. Um, and we just like starting the year with, with a whole lot of energy, a whole lot of hope and passion to really continue doing our craft here. Nice, nice. Yes. A lot of energy with me here. Of course. <laughs> I love the energy. Well, welcome, man. Thanks again for being here yeah, on the show. For being here. Yeah, and uh, I know we were talking a little bit earlier before we went live uh, about our backgrounds here, but I gotta, I gotta blow it up here. What, what is this amazing, awesome background you got? What is this painting ah, behind you? These are my artwork. So if I'm not doing films or, and so I'm just like kind of uh, doing some visual arts paintings and all. Wow, you painted yeah. that. That's yeah, amazing. Yeah. yeah. That's awesome. That's awesome. And you got to show the shirt. You got to represent. I see your shirt there. There you go. Uh, well, the, uh, so, of course, um, uh, one of my favorite band. Oh, yeah. 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 I, I got I got I got it up here. I got the uh, one of their albums yeah. <laughs> right up here and framed. It's, like, it's uh, there's so it's like an anthemic uh, thing for me in the shoot because it gives a, a, a whole lot of energy. Yeah. Uh, you know, most especially when. There's a whole lot of big scenes and action scenes, so I just need to really play it loud. And oh yeah, everything is like pump up. Yeah, it's all about that hard rock and uh, yeah. classic rock and metal. We love it. Yeah. That's right. Yeah, so yeah. we're brothers already, man. You got the horror painting in the background. You got the metal shirt on. <laughs> 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 and uh, we're gonna get into Triggered here because Triggered yes. blew me away. The trailer blew me away. Uh, we're gonna lead up to that for sure, but. Oh my goodness! How did you get into the industry, my friend? Um, uh, I've been in the industry already, like maybe half of my life, maybe working twenty-five years already. So I really, I, I, I dream uh, to be a visual artist. I really dream to be a painter before, but uh, I can't afford the the expenses with yeah. with with the school and all of the the things uh, having to pursue it. So I decide to be a seafarer because that's the uh, most convenient course and job before in the Philippines. If you really want to earn money and dollars before, you, you have to be a seaman. Okay. So I, I studied for four years, then went to the big city, so that uh, I could apply for abroad, and then a mentor I've met uh, a mentor of mine who is my my uncle, and he is a uh, uh, one of the top and one of the uh, big filmmaker here in the Philippines now. His name is uh, Eric Mati. Oh, so nice. Shout during out. those time, during those time, he's about to start his first film. So when I went to Manila. I asked him if I could stay with him and work with him for for some uh, casual work uh, before I could really uh, land my place somewhere uh, or I yeah. could really take my my job at sea. Then he invited me because I think he's like 26 years old that time and I'm 19. 20 around that time and he said now I'm about to start my film why don't you work with me as a utility a utility guy you know uh, doing all this uh, small stuff uh, in the set or assisting him uh, okay personally yeah with, with his staff with his um, uh, with his daily schedules and all until uh, they discovered my talent that I'm really good in drawing and I'm really good in craftsmanship that they hired me to be a craftsman to do some murals on set or to create some props or to do some nitty-gritty uh, uh, 
special requirements on set. And then when they discovered that I have that certain kind of talent, they hired me as an art department. And then, yes. yeah. And the rest yeah, is history. Just... The rest is history. So I really started from the ranks. I, I started as a as a art department guy until such time that uh, after eight years, I got an offer to be a production designer. So now I'm starting to create some some real big sets because, of course, you're young, so you're energetic. So right, right. And you have got this full of uh, imagination. And then I continue, uh, I continue to pursue what's in there in filmmaking because even if I'm doing production design on set, I always had my attention with the camera, with the with the guy sitting in front yeah. of the camera and giving instructions. So I'm always I'm always in that certain kind of uh, vision that uh, what it's like to be sitting there and running the show and creating uh, all of these visuals in your head that everyone is following you. Nice and a script was like handed down to me and then I studied the script right there and there, studied it at home, how script uh, was written and how script is written until I start to write myself also. All right. And that's it. That's how I open up my door in directing. So I, I wrote I wrote my own story and then I send it to everyone who's interested to it. And we're very and I'm very like one of those fortunate ones to be given such uh, opportunity because of these small local festivals, was like uh, giving grants to to those who have uh, such interesting materials. Oh, amazing! That's awesome. Yeah. So, so you literally were a sponge, just yes. soaking up everything on on. You're learning as you go and increasing your knowledge on on, on the cameraman, the camera work, how to direct. All that stuff. That's awesome, man. That's awesome. I, I think I think um, it's the process that I've been telling my students also because okay. uh, I've been mentoring and having workshops with a whole lot of aspiring filmmakers also. The one thing that I'm always just like trying to share and give to them is there's no shortcut. You need to really find your voice if it is for you or if it is the the, the, the route that you're really uh, wanting to go. But there's no shortcut that you just want to be a designer, you just want to be a filmmaker or a director or uh, anything else. It needs to be like a, a whole lot of process and a whole lot of learning for you. Then you'll realize that, oh, I really wanted this. Because talent for me, talent is there. But the one thing that I truly believe is how you really wanted it, how you really, really, really wanted it for you. Yeah. No, well said. Well said. That's important, right? Yeah. Like how much passion do you have? How much drive? Yes. How hard are you willing to work? I mean, no, that's great. That's great advice for all the younglings coming up trying to be filmmakers. That's great. There are no shortcuts. You got to work hard, you know. But when you work hard, blessings will come. You know what I mean? Good things will happen for sure, as long as you stick with it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. we got some awesome people watching right now. He's going, hey, what's going on, Todd? He's saying hello. We got uh, Kevin down here. He says, hello, Fat Samurai Guy. And a special guest, Richard. He's saying hello there. Yes, good to see everybody. There you go, throwing it up. Oh, there we go. ACDC t-shirt, cool. There you go. <laughs> that's right, that's right. That's right. My audience knows what's up, man. Uh, yeah. But yeah, you've speaking, you know, going back to the art, uh, you've won uh, spe uh, several awards here. And congratulations, yes. man. Yes, on, uh, yes, yes. What, what's this project here? Oh yeah, this it's a is a fantasy. It looks like a fantasy flick. It's a fantasy. It's a fantasy flick. But pandai meaning the meaning of pandai is blacksmith. Okay. But this is the most iconic. Uh, uh, it started with the uh, comics. It started with the comics. All way right. Back in, way back in the early seventies, and then it's been like a uh, an historical. Wow. Uh, film because. It is uh, starred by our uh, ultimate uh, 
actor here in the Philippines and his name is Fernando Poe Jr. I think he's like the the, the Clint Eastwood of Hollywood. So he's doing Western. He's all doing right. Western, and he's doing all this fantasy thing. And the one thing that uh, Fernando Poe Jr. inspired us to be a filmmaker because uh, he's also an actor-director. Okay. And he's doing most of his films and directing it. And it's been uh, Pandai, it's been like remake, remake, and remake when 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 our great uh, Fernando Poe Jr. Uh, retired from the scene and it's been remake by a different uh, famous actors in the Philippines also. Wow. So it's, it's literally... It's like Star Wars. It's like Star Wars. Yeah, yeah I was going to say. Sort of like it's, That's awesome. He's got to keep making more and more because it's yeah. such an iconic character. But yeah, congratulations on winning an award there for Movie Production Designer of the Year. And we're just going to keep the awards going here. I mean, look at this. Exodus Tales from the Enchanted Kingdom. You won uh, also there too for Best Production Design. Congrats. Yes. Uh, Exodus uh, Tales of the... Enchanted Kingdom, it's my second collaboration with my mentor, who is Eric Mati. And this is like the, the my step up to be, uh, to create my name as a production designer because it's a fantasy film also. It, it, it uh, deals with a whole lot of CGI's and practical effects. Because All right. way back in the days, until now, uh, here in the Philippines, we are still uh, reliant on practical effects. Yes. I, I, so, so I think the 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 idea uh, we really need to nurture that certain kind of idea and technique that until now we're still really uh, uh, working on it. Oh, that's awesome! That's yeah. awesome to hear because we champion that so much here on the channel. Uh, practical effects, baby, and. You know everything. We, we we understand when everything is CGI heavy and a lot of the big bo big yeah. blockbusters. But you notice, uh, I always we always use Lord of the Rings for example. Uh, the CGI would enhance the practical, yeah. and that's what it's there for. So, and that's always that always turns out to be the best. But that's awesome to hear that you guys are doing it practical over there and getting better and better and better. That's what I'm talking about, man. That, that's what's up. And also, uh, El Peste here. What's this project about? Ah. El Peste, it's really like my personal film. It's just like my uh, kind of my expressionistic uh, moment in films when I had this little amount of money and then you ask a whole lot of friends and people that how come uh, we try, let's try to do something very more personal, very more uh, uh, explore, explore, uh, exploitative. Okay. So, yeah, so we we made it. It's it's kind of a psychological thriller. It's all a, right. Yeah, psychological thriller, but very domestic. The film it's very has a lot of domestic issues, and what mm. I think, what I think it's uh, the appeal of the film because it's just so domestic. Uh, uh, it's about this um, husband and wife who's been like being stalked by a. Uh, insect repellent guy who is like a, a rat repellent guy they've been stalked by this rat repellent guy what yeah and then every now and then um in order for the repellent uh, guy to seduce the wife he breeds a whole lot of of rats inside the house every now and then and oh then my so goodness that, so that the wife could always call the no the rat exterminator guy that hey we still have a lot of rats here. So the the rat exterminator guy could just like really come there anytime and then uh, to create that certain kind of illicit uh, thing with the wow. With the woman. Wow, that so, sounds pretty good. It's kind of yeah, it's kind of really crazy and uh, very experimental. Yeah. But we're very glad that it's a it's like kind of a personal film, but yeah, I think it Got some attentions also here in 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 our nice. festival here. Look, yeah. Brandon's already he's already giving it the thumbs up there. He's already loving it right there. <laughs> he's loving the concept. Oh yeah. my goodness! And uh, I, we're, we're, we're now now to prove again that we're brothers. 
you're dipping into the horror here, man. Yes. And you know we love our action and martial arts and horror. And yes. again, congrats on your uh, achievements, winning awards here, best director. I mean, this is awesome. But tell us about this project right here. Wow, Yang Gao. This is my first feature length. Oh, okay. And this is my first feature length. And Yang Gao means uh, affliction. Affliction. So during those times when, when projects, when you're starting in the industry, of course, we all understand that you're still making your way and the projects is kind of scarce at first because you're still just like making your name. And even if you're like doing production designs or art department job on the set, again, just like what I said a while ago, you're, you're, you still have this kind of uh, goal uh, in your mind that the itch inside your mind and in your heart that I can do this. I, I can definitely, I can definitely uh, do this because I'm inspired to really be a, a filmmaker, a, a, a director. So I've been like going through my whole lot of childhood stories. I grew up in the province, way back in the south. So Philippines is like kind of divided with the three big region. It's the Luzon, Visayas, Mindanao. So Luzon is like it's like the main, and we are in the middle, the Visayas region. And of course, we have the south, which is the Mindanao region. But we are very rich in all of these uh, folklore stories. Nice. So I just like keep on keep on uh, going back to those childhood stories that I know there's something in there. I know there's something in there. And true enough, I recalled a story of my grandfather that was shared to me every night when I need to sleep in this small uh, hut where I grew up Yeah. in order for me to sleep early. So he's been telling me about like a neighbor of them mm -hmm. in his early years that the neighbor was infected was infected by a certain or a mysterious disease that will going to make her a creature of the night which is called aswang the goals that's our that's our goal gauls here in the philippines it's like our local vampire and what one thing that really struck me with that story, because it's so familiar, because when I realized that when my grandfather told me that it's just like a neighbor of them, at the same time, they're very much familiar to her story. So I explored that idea, and then I came up with a question of, yeah, what if, what if a monster or a creature of the night or a vampire is one of your family and how you are going to deal with it? Right, yeah. So I, I, I had that certain kind of idea that, okay, I will not going to do a jump scare horror film because... Of course, I'm I, 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 I'm a fan of William Friedkin's Exorcist. Yes, that's more visceral. Yeah, I, it's more visceral. It's more personal, and it's more disturbing. So I created that world where there's a farmer who's trying to really like want to live a very peaceful life in the countryside, and then a daughter of his who came home and the daughter the daughter worked in the different province came home with a different illness until such time they discovered that the daughter is dealing with this a uh, malevolent malevolent uh, uh, disease inside her and she is starting to uh, wreak havoc and she's starting to inflict harm in the community. But what will the father will going to do? Right. Is he is he is he will going to get rid of the daughter or just going to turn a blind eye 
because of the love of, her, of for the love of his daughter or he'll going to report it to the authority because who wants to believe that his daughter is dealing with certain kind so because of this film i really i i i, I can proudly say that this made my mark in the uh, some biggest international festival because it's kind of certain you during those time with the story that it went to Toronto Midnight Film Festival, to Hong Kong Film Festival, All to, right. to even to Switzerland Black Festival. So th that's where I realized that uh, stories like this, most especially if it is personal and you know who are the characters in this, it's more essential and it's more important. And it's just like easy to, to create this universe because you know all of these people. So yes, I started, I started to create horror stories at first and psychological trailer. In fact, I started my horror journey when I did uh, one of these uh, episodes for one of these famous omnibus film in the Philippines, which is Shake, Rattle, and Roll. And I made like, again, another uh, an Aswang tale, but Western, very much like Sam Raimi. So I'm just like kind of mixing a whole lot of genres and giving it a different playboard, but at the same time, a uh, very familiar story. Oh, I love it. I love it. And and the Shake, Rattle, and Roll franchise, is that kind of, it's like a horror anthology, right? Series, horror right? anthology. And we got a new one uh, coming out. Yes. Is, is it out already or is it this year? Uh, it was out uh, during Christmas time. Okay. Because, okay. Uh, it is like uh, a time of the year that a horror film, like most especially Shake, Rattle, and Roll is... Um, really famous because we have this local Metro Manila Film Festival. Yeah. So uh, I think it's it's about time that after uh, an hiatus for four years, uh, the company, which is Regal, uh, created another anthology for that one. Uh, will the newest Shake, Rattle, and Roll? Extreme. I like that. I got yes, the extreme yes. in there. I love that poster. That's amazing. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, is that is that will, will that come out here in the states? You think at some point? Well, I think it will gonna come out digitally uh, at least. Digitally, or I okay. think it will come out in a in a whole lot of content. I think uh, okay, awesome. because th that's always the, the the route. That's always the way for to really bring the films uh, globally. Nice. Look, you got people in chat right now recognizing some of your movies, man. Look at that. How cool is that? Yes. And uh, well, hello, Richard. I mean, excuse me, Champ Blaze. <laughs> He's saying hello, Richard. Hi, Champ. <laughs> oh man, this is a blast. I'm loving this. Yeah. But yeah, you're making me want to see this next now. What's this project? Oh, this uh, this one. This is something that uh, that inspired me to do because I asked my staff and uh, my my crew that what if let's do a siege film. Because we, we haven't done any siege films here in the Philippines. Right. Because I'm a fan of a whole lot of siege films, most especially Sampek and Pastro Dog. Yes. Yeah. So so I, I'm doing films that I really wanted to watch also. Gotcha. So yeah. I, I'm, I'm not like doing it for the sake of just like doing it. Uh, I'm doing films which excite me. Like, okay, let's do something like a siege film. Let's do something like... Uh, uh, straw dogs or uh, assault on prison 13. Yeah. So something that, something that the issue or the premise is the oppressed will going to stand and fight it off. That's it. All That's right. It. So, Sold. Uh, yeah. So cry no fear. It's about these two bickering half sister teenagers. And then when the, when the storm like struck, uh, the whole Metro Manila and of course it's always happening here in Manila where if uh, there's a, a big storm the lights comes out and then it's just so simply there's a whole lot of a family of uh, burglars just wanted to get in because right. they've been like 
studying the place already. So what's nice about this, because I said, how could these two brat uh, girls will going yeah. to work together in order to survive the night? So I just love to work around with such uh, uh, survival films. I, yeah. I, I always love that. I always love that. Yeah, this sounds exciting. I'm going to have to yeah. try to check this out for sure. And speaking of trying to check in your movies out, the chat already is like, these all sound really good. I want to see them. I'm going to check them out. <laughs> Chat's yeah. already, they're already sold, man. They're selling them. Yes. Uh, but yeah, really quick, what did you think of the Straw Dogs remake, which I kind of refused to watch? Is mm. Was it any good? I think it's good. Okay. But, but I think... Uh, for me, it lost the, the touches and the rawness and the, uh, a certain kind of easiness what Sam Pekinpa did in 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 his in his uh, original film. Yeah. For me, it's kind of polish, mm. and there's kind of uh, very more Hollywood to it. Gotcha. It's missing all the grit of the original. Yeah, with Sam yeah. Pekinpa, you know from the first opening scene, there's already there's already an uneasiness, an uneasiness yeah. to it, and at the same time, um, there's already like a, a some psychological uh, disturbance, even even with our main character, and mm -hmm. even with the relationships. Their relationships, yeah, and even how, 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 how uh, Susan George's character's been uh, drafted. I think there, there's some kind of enigma to her. There's some kind of playfulness in her, but at the same time, uh, you don't know exactly what she's thinking about. So, yeah. and of course, it's it's always the the rawness, the rawness of, yeah. of, of, of the film. And just seeing, you know, Dustin Hoffman's character kind of like this mild, you know, not really kind of weak in a way at first. Yeah. But then by the end of the movie, he's just just been pushed to madness, <laughs> like survival and just madness because he's trying I, to survive. I, I think, and just seeing yeah. the transformations, phenomenal. Yeah, I think that's the most important thing. Yeah, That's the reason why just Dustin Hoffman uh, did really like a, a, a perfect job in there because... It's kind of an that that the theme there. It's kind of how this a uh, moth will become a butterfly or uh, a cub will going yeah. to become a a, a, a brutal uh, predator in the end when right. he's pushed. So I think that's the whole theme there. It's a, it's a, that a, the transformation, the transformation. Yeah, so good. I was I was stunned. Love straw dogs, yeah. and uh, this is a biopic here. Oh. Supremo. This one, Supremo means uh, uh, the leader. I think uh, Supremo is uh, uh, it's about Andres Bonifacio. And Andres Bonifacio is one of our national heroes here. And he's like our William Wallace. Our oh, William right. Wallace here. Um, he put to arms uh, with the revolution... We have we have uh, Jose Rizal, which is our national, our main national hero, Jose Rizal. Uh, he's an intellect. He 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 he's one who's like drafting all, all the books, all the uh, inspirations, and all. And uh, Andres Bonifacio put the arm struggle, put the arm struggle. So so that's the reason why. His story, it's kind of interesting because uh, you were going to follow his plight. And most especially in history, uh, Supremo is a uh, son of a peasant. Uh, oh, yeah, so he's a son of the peasant that uh, being drove into oppression and all until such time uh, our Supremo meet Jose Rizal, which uh, turns uh, turns to be uh, his mentor uh, as they go along with the revolution. Mm -hmm. So while uh, uh, Doctor Jose Rizal is doing all the the 
the the mind the mind thing the intellects the the planning uh, most especially the, the 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 political views and all Andres Bonifacio on the side took the armed struggle getting the the mass support and to um, to create a whole lot of pack and to create such uh, guerrilla warfare and all so it's kind of interesting to really really uh, follow his path until such time that he got assassinated and until now it's mm. been debated who 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 uh, devised the assassination right 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 wow and there's a whole lot and there's a whole lot of different background on how he was assassinated some books said that uh, he got shot in the head by uh, a perpetrator behind him. But the one thing that shocked us uh, with the, the different version of the story of him, how he was assassinated, there's a dialogue by the per 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 uh, perpetrators that said every bullet counts. So it's going to waste that if we're going to waste that uh, into his head. So why just don't we just hack him to death? Oh, so wow. that, oh my goodness! Yeah, so, yeah, so that's uh, that's something that's very poetic in a way. Yeah. So what the the version that I made was that that uh, he got hacked to death. Wow! Wow! Yeah. Wow! Interesting, fascinating. I have to check yeah. that one out as well yeah. and learn some. Amazing history. This Supremo is always shown every November 30 here in the Philippines because that is uh, Jose Risa, uh, no, Andres Bonifacio Day. Oh, all right. All right. Nice. Very nice. We will not die tonight. Ah, yeah. This is one of the most important film in my filmmaking journey. Again, there's a whole lot of uh, up and down with with our careers here in the Philippines, and which I think to realize it, I think it's more very important the, that we experience that certain kind of feeling that you 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 still have that hunger because when you realize that projects uh, are not that uh, easy to come by. So the hunger is still there. Right. And then uh, it's the same also with my actor. So my actor, who is Erich Gonzalez, she is a good friend of mine, and I work with her in I work with her in a t uh, in a whole lot of TV series in this uh, big network, which is ABS-CBN. So we used to do melodrama films. We used to do melodrama TV series. I okay. Mean. All right. But the thing is, we have that you have that certain kind of hunger to do differently uh, sometimes in your career. Yeah. So, Erich called me up one time and she said, Do you have any project, uh, a different kind of project where we could just like uh, do some rock and roll thing? You know? Yeah. Uh, we, we produce it and all. So, I said to him, I said to her, I mean, I have a script that I really uh, written for you, and this is called "We Will Not Die Tonight," and this is inspired by the Warriors. Oh my God! Yeah, <laughs> one this of my favorite movies of all time. I just talked okay. about that movie yesterday. I think this is uh, it, Warriors. The Warriors. It's uh, my favorite um, survival film of all time. So, yeah. You see, there's a whole lot of thread of how I love, uh, how I see my films from Sam Peck and Pa. Yeah. To, so th th there's a film familiarity. So when I said, uh, I want to do The Warriors, it's a, it's a survival thing. And it's just one night of, it's just one night of uh, adventure in all. And then, and then she said, I'm excited to do this. This is brutal in all. I called up friends. Small budget. This is small budget. We just like produce this. Small yeah. budget. That's all right. So, yeah. so the story is, the story is, it's about this stunt woman. She's a, yeah, her role is stunt, is a, she's a stunt woman in the okay. Philippines. Okay. She just wants to 
make her end meets because she has an ailing father. She joins some of her some some of her friends to make some deals with with a certain kind of a sketchy deal one night. Until such time, they realize that they will be hired to to deal some drugs. But the one that they uh, that they're dealing with said it's kind of it's kind of hard to deal drugs now, most especially with the change of the administration in the Philippines five years ago. There's a really a, a, a crackdown on war on drugs, so it's going too hard for them. They switch into kidnapping street children for mm. organ for organ no. um, transplant. Transplant. Yeah. So wow. when they realize that they're gonna do it, okay, it it's not going to work. Uh, that's very much uh, a different deal. So the gang that hired them got mad at them. They realized that uh, they're going to be um, uh, eradicate. So it's like a, a whole night of chase. It's a whole night of brutal fight and all, which. New York Asian Film Festival notice it. Really? Yeah, uh, and then New York, New York Asian Film Festival said, you want a world premiere for this one? So I got invited to the New York Film Festival and for my world premiere. So imagine this small film had uh, the world premiere That's in amazing. New York. Wow. In New York Film Festival. Because of that, I brought it back here in the Philippines again. And the major networks notices it that they want to purchase it already because it's making uh, waves uh, uh, yeah. somewhere else. Yeah, yeah. And that's where I end up with Raven Banner. Raven yes. Banner Entertainment noticed my film and they said, can we present it uh, in the global stage for distribution? And I just said yes. But the thing is, during those time, it was already purchased by the big network. So I said to Raven Banner that um, make make the deal with uh, ABS-CBN already because they purchased it. But the thing is, uh, and what's nice about this, I mean, was after five years that we haven't been uh, in uh, uh, contact with Raven Banner for such projects like this, we had this project again with Topak after five years. So it's kind of like... Okay, uh, it's come it's full circle. Full circle. Yeah, yeah. But well, yeah, we will I'm, not die. It's very... Yeah personal to me again because you know these people the more that the more that they're familiar to you they know it and it's all about passion regardless of budget and all uh yeah. it's gonna it's gonna really create something else well we support independent cinema here yes. all, all the time on this channel that's what this that's what this channel is all about but i'm sold you got a badass character <laughs> wearing the metallica yeah. shirt holding weapons Killing the bad guys in brutal and brutal fashion. It got that yes. warriors, got that warriors vibe. I mean, uh, you're you're killing me here, Richard. I want to watch all <laughs> like everything yeah. you've made so far. You're, you're, I'm dying over here. I'm dying. And oh. uh, they even asked me in uh, a small anecdote. If they, in New York Asian Film Festival, they really noticed the ride the lightning T-shirt. Yeah, and they've yeah. been like really, what's with the ride ride uh, ride the lightning shirt? There's uh, there's a meaning to it. Of course, I'm a number one Metallica fan, and I'm just like keep on looking for something like a thematic, yeah, a thematic, a, a thematic. Uh, there, uh, there it is, right there, baby. For my character, That's yeah, you, exactly. right there, right there. <laughs> exactly. So when I when I realize that it's going to be ride the lightning because it's just a whole lot of run and run and run and run, perfect, and even with the with the beat of Rad the Lightning, I think it's really perfect for really perfect for for We Will Not Die Tonight. It's already in my head. The song's in my head. Yeah. Now. <laughs> the That's trailer, amazing. the trailer is in YouTube of okay. uh, We Will Not Die also. Yeah. Nice. Oh, I'm gonna check it out for sure. Uh when did you start uh 
getting into action uh, and fight choreography and action design and all that? Mm. While while doing, uh, of course, again, on the job, uh, on the job, this is the the project of my mentor Eric Mati, and I think uh, on the job was stream and HBO, but. On the job part two was invited in uh, Venice uh, Film Festival three years ago. But I made on the job one as a production designer. My my another uh, collaboration with my mentor who is uh, the director of it. And uh, they got me for the production design again. So, but... During my early days, as uh, doing again, do, doing the shake, rattle, and roll, and young gal, I'm into more with the choreography thing. Okay. And again, that is something that I still dream before to do an action film, which uh, I think I I set the stage for myself and for my staff. We we will not die tonight, and okay. th- that's where they realize, okay. Uh, this is a different route again to do such collaboration with with an action scenes because it's just so hard to do action films here before in the Philippines because it's kind of costly. It's mm. really costly, and um, there's a whole lot of time implication. So it's just a matter of having that certain kind of balls and spirit before to do something like we will not die. And yeah. hoping that it would translate to something else as long as it's fresh, it's original, and as long as the audience will gonna see where are you going to uh, head your, your path as a director. So I really I, I I I really wanted to do an action film before after after horror. So that's the okay. reason why with Cry No Fear and with 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 a whole lot of shake rattle and roll and some collaborations with some other directors, I've been doing the 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 action choreography already. Until I met uh, Erwin Tagli, uh, who is an MMA instructor and uh, uh, a coach. That's where our collaboration started to to nice. blossom. And then so we've been working with a whole lot of projects here and there after. Oh, that's awesome. Amazing. Yeah. And last but not least, we have this last one here. Yeah, this is also an anthology. This is also an anthology. It's a crime film. It's All right. Crime, uh, this is produced by one of our uh, famous uh, actor here in the Philippines. His name is uh, Ramon Bong Revilla. Uh, he, he's a big uh, uh, action star here. And um, he produced it for his sons. Uh, okay. So these are his sons, and he's like our Arnold Schwarzenegger here in the Philippines. Nice. So, yeah. <laughs> so he he just wanted to do uh, action film for his son to see where his um, sons were going to take that route. So uh, tres is like a trio means trio. So yeah, this is like a a narcos kind of feel or. Um, uh, uh, a Hong Kong cup film. So, okay. yeah, that's that's exciting because it's a trilogy, different directors. Uh, so you're showcasing different kind of styles and different kind of um, visual uh, nice. approach. Nice. Love it. I love it. Well, speaking yes. of Narco, you have a question here for you from chat, Richard. He goes, uh, question... Do you have any thoughts on the Sicario movies? Uh, um, in, uh, interesting question because I like I like Sicario one. I, I've never seen the second one yet. Yeah, uh, the first one. I like the first one. I mean, yeah. I like the first one because again, uh, it's 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 smooth. It's it's brooding and yeah. uh, it's so very good. character. It's very character driven. Yeah. Uh, I still like the. The, the visual spectacle of Sicario 2. Okay. But more, but I'm more with the story of Sicario 1. Gotcha. Because uh, okay. th- there's a whole lot of different layer. And again, the story in Sicario 1 is very more personal and very familiar because it's right. revenge. It's all about revenge until such time that they're caught in a web of uh, 
Uh, there's a whole lot of conspiracy and there's a whole lot of uh, politi political pictures at play, but only to realize that what our lead character in Sicario is just like treading on for such personal revenge. So I think that is yeah. something that's very uh, important. With Sicario 2, it becomes like uh, a premise of a, a rogue warrior being hunted by his own by his hmm. own colleagues, like born, right. born, okay. born series and all. So it's it's a matter of moral compass already. Well, what is moral in me and what will going to defy the, the things that was being um, ordered to me. Gotcha. Okay. Was yeah. there was there talk of a third one or no? I've been like reading some stuff before that they're planning for a third one, but we still don't know what kind of premise they were going to have on the table. Gotcha. Gotcha. We'll have to wait and see. Well, hopefully it's good. I still need to watch the second one, yeah. but I love the first one for sure. Yes. Uh, but before we get to the main meat of the night, the reason we're here, the reason this the the, the, the this this movie brought Samurai Guy to the dance, yeah. and I had to reach out to Richard here. Before we get to that, I forgot to ask you earlier, what's some of your favorite films of all time? Oh, my favorite films of all time, again, I've already shared... You shared some uh, of them, yeah. Some Pekin Pa, Straw Dogs, I could like watch it every yeah. now and then. Any of other course, action or horror movies? Walter Hill's The Warrior, uh, The Exorcist, and then... Um, this is the, the, the this is the inspiration of Topak. I just really wanted to do my Travis Bickle, my own Travis Bickle. So for me, uh, it's Taxi Driver. I love okay. Taxi Driver. So yeah, so that's Taxi Driver. That's five. Uh, of course, I have Fargo in mind. That's All right. My, yeah, Fargo by the Cohen. So I love it. Uh, I, I'm never going to miss. Uh, John McTiernan's The Predator. Yes, I love yeah, the, the posters right there, baby. Yeah, yeah, I, that's, <laughs> that's one of my that that's really uh, inspired me. Uh, first Blood. Yes, John Rambo's First Blood. Yeah. Classic. And then, yeah, Goodfellas. That's yeah. That, I think, nah, Goodfellas Night, and some of my chill out film that I. I really be my like in my top ten is uh, the Big Lebowski by the <laughs> so, that's so funny. That's, that's 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 one of my yeah, yeah another out. another cult yeah. classic right there. Yeah. Like, you have great taste in movies, my friend. Oh, thank I, you, right? thank you. Just thank like you. my audience and uh, myself, I'm not too bad either. But yeah. now we are here. Uh, big shout out to Michael Pass. Uh, Michael Pass has been on the show several times. Yeah. A producer from Raven Banner. That's right. Yes. Raven Banner, the banner of badassity. That's right. I keep telling him to use that. <laughs> yeah. I was the one that said it first. <laughs> he started using it. You, you use that, Michael. You have my permission. The banner of badassity. But we're, I'm about to show, I'm about to blow chat's mind right now. Let us check out the trailer to Triggered. I did a trailer reaction to it a while back, and that's when I had to reach out to Richard because I was just like, oh, my God. Like, this is right up Samurai Guy's Alley. So let's check it out, and then we can talk about it, brother. Let's do it. Tres pasen kayo labas. Ayaw mahabol lang kasi sa amin. Sige, natulungan niyo kami. Ayaw mo sila bigay sa amin. Magkakandaletse-letse tayo dito. O di magkandaletse-letse na. Putang inang gera yan! Putang inang! Hindi ka sila ng mundo ang gera. Tao ang gumagawa ng gera. Sino ka? Ano ka? Pinagbuto ng ulo ang matalik kong kaibigan. Sama mga katropa ko. Araw akong pinapangungot ng iyak at sigaw nila. Hindi ordinaryo itong tumitira sa atin. Mag-ingat kayo. Naramdaman ko magkakalaglaga na tayo dito. Pinapago tayo malagutan ang hindi. At tapusin natin ito. 
Hindi mo namang gera to eh. Sa gera, damay lahat. Yeah! Oh yeah! Hey! Ho! What? What? That? Scratched the action itch, baby. Oh yeah, man. I still get chills watching that trailer. Uh, my reaction, I was like, oh shit! Because I, I had no idea what I was about to watch. It like blew me away. All the amazing action and, and uh, you know, gore and practical effects. I was like, oh my god. Oh my goodness. So let's go ahead and have some fun here. And let's bring it up again. And uh, by all means, my friend, uh, talk about uh, how this came about. Hold on, let me uh, let's uh, bring us down here. That way, we get to see more of the action. Uh, but yeah, how how many days did it take to film uh, Triggered? Oh, uh, I shot Triggered for eighteen days. Oh wow! Yeah, impressive. And our yeah. lead here, I love this guy's voice, man. Yeah. <laughs> Um, he's got a heroic voice. He he's um Arjo Altaide really nailed the, the part and um I I really imagined him to to give this certain kind of a uh, different layer to to the character. He 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 did an amazing job and What's nice about it because um, my actor uh, Arjo Ataide is one of the top uh, drama actors here in the Philippines. Uh, All right. Yeah, and he said to me while while, while uh, I, I pitched the project to him, and he said to me, uh, "I'm not I'm not a, 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 a typical action guy because I'm not." I'm not big, I'm not muscular, so um, how do you imagine my my character for this one? Because with the script that I'm reading, he said to me, um, it needs to have a lot of physicality, so how, how do you see me for this one? And I just said to him, because he's, he's uh, really good in drama, and I said to him, Try to watch Taxi Driver by Robert De Niro, and that's it. We're going to go in that route. Your strength, your strength, it's not being your physical attributes to yourself, yeah. but your strength is here, and your strength is your heart, and the rest will going to uh, uh, f- uh, f- uh, fall into place. And then uh, I said to him, my inspiration for this one is John Woo's Hard Boiled because oh. I'm, I'm a number one fan of John Woo. And yes. Chow Yan Fat is not a muscular guy. No, no. He, he, he carried the whole, in fact, it, it made the whole John Woo and uh, John Woo and uh, Chow Yan Fat's collaboration a global sensation because of that. And it's how, it's how they collaborate with each other and it's how the director believe and trust his actor and how his actor um, delivered it. So with me and Arjo, I really like give my hats to him because he just like kind of uh, blown me away because the whole thing is so internal and it's just like uh, burst it into the scene with a different approach and a yeah. different kind of... Uh, uh, different kind of style and uh, precision. So uh, I, I really, really love seeing it with 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 Arjo in here, and he's love got it. notice also in the the festival that we've been through. Everyone's just like saying, "This this actor nails the part." And I said, "Wow, thank you for that because you've noticed it, and uh, it's really like uh, our our goal." to really present a, a different kind of an action star in here. No, nah, I love it. I love it. Well, not, don't, not only does he hit the mark, but he slices necks uh, <laughs> as <Yeah>. well. <laughs> oh, man, I'm loving loving the, the gore effects and the practical effects in here. I mean, look at this. Look at that. 
We got jibs. We <laughs> we got yes. sausage. We got sausages falling down. I mean, come on. And here I'm, I'm definitely getting that uh, hard boiled vibe, especially you know tequila using that shotgun. Yeah. You know, oh man, definitely getting that vibe here. Love it. Yeah, it's it's really my homage to it's really my homage to uh, I I've been like honest to 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 everyone that uh, it's my homage to hard boiled. It's love my it to 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 the killers uh, and to for a better tomorrow. I just like. I just like I just like uh, want to uh, do something like uh, how these films inspired me growing up. Oh yeah, yeah. I think we all love to do our own little homages to the yeah. classics. But that is that's amazing, man. That's amazing. But yes. for everybody watching right now, Richard, give us like a little without spoilers, without spoiling it, you know anything because we want all of you guys that are watching to see this movie. But let everybody know, Richard, uh, the basic brief uh, plot synopsis of the film. Ah, uh, yeah. Uh, I, I, I've created this story during pandemic time. And again, um, I just like trying to run everything in, inside my head. What's the best and what's a uh, uh, story to create during this pandemic? And I've been through, running through a whole lot of news and all. And then... Um, and how, uh, how how people g uh, get triggered with with a lot of things in this world that turn them into sometimes monsters or turn them uh, into a different being when triggered because topak means crazy in the Philippines that when when someone will going to tell you you have topak meaning you have sick in the head so okay. you have something like that yeah and I came about with the news in our local news that there's a one security guard uh, in one of the mall here in Manila just got berserk with with a different he just got berserk with a different uh, uh, motivation and what what triggered him to do something like that wow and so I I, 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 I follow that. I try to research on it, and yeah, I've been reading a whole lot of stories about security guards who just like go on a rampage one day without any motivation. But here in the Philippines, uh, there are a lot of security guards who became ah uh, who were once soldiers before. Right. So that's the whole thing here. When you retired from the service as a soldier and you still want to continue to work uh, and you still want to, you know, um, try to continue your living. So most of them became security guards, but most of them are all special forces uh, way back in their time in the, the military. So yeah. I... I continued that story until I realized that I just really wanted to do films like an ex-Special Forces guy yeah. who's like being uh, pushed to the limit and what he can do when right. when being... Uh, being uh, pushed by the bad guys, yes. the villain of the piece. And yeah. Again, all right. I went back to First Blood and I yeah. said, "Wow, this is this is something that I really wanted to do. Uh, let's try to do some uh, inspiration with First Blood." And then that's where Topak came along. And uh, what's exciting about it because when 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 we developed Topak, we are still on the last leg of our uh, drug war here in the Philippines. Mm. So I think it's like a, a a starting. It's not like a starting uh, board for for the story where this uh, soldier became a security guard who happened to save the life of these two uh, in, individuals being um, attacked or being uh, chased by. Uh, a corrupt uh, 
police a uh, police force. Gotcha, gotcha. So, okay. And I said, uh, maybe it's nice to explore that idea, and yeah. you'll be seeing a different point of view, and again, you'll be seeing a different um, moral compass and what's right and what's uh, wrong uh, in this decision. So even if they made a bad decision this one night, but you have this uh, lead character and you have this uh, lead character with the story who just tends to follow what he believes it's a rightfully uh, a rightful act regardless okay. of what's their uh, intentions and background with the people that uh, revolves around him. Nice, nice. All right, let's get back to it. Back to Topak slash Triggered. Yeah, here we go. We are all casualties of war there. There you go. There you go. Oh, my goodness. But, yeah, just the that whole action design. Did, did you have a special team to do the action? Yes. Uh, with the whole uh, action design team, uh, this is my, like, third collaboration with Erwin Tagle, who is uh, my fight uh, designer, fight designer, and uh, stunt coordinator. And now... I'm happy for him because uh, he's going to uh, uh, direct his own film. He'll he, uh, he'll going to be a director this year already. All right. So, yeah, I'm happy for him. Yeah. So it's like uh, we have this team, like the team of John Wick guys, who like uh, just having a, a small small unit, but uh, everyone is like uh, having a different. Uh, function at work so most especially me with and Erwin so we just kind of uh, trying to devise something which is let's attack this on a practical level because we cannot afford this on uh, with a whole lot of special effects or CGI effects so the choreography must be like this must be like this so um, I'm very fortunate that we have a different, uh, 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 I mean, uh, the same vision with, with, with the film. And then, of course, I have my design team, my production design team, and my special effects uh, people that will going to work around with that uh, idea and with that vision. So uh, there's a whole lot of uh, collaborating process. And that's how it should be, you know? Yeah, yeah. everybody working hard together. Uh, to create something special. Yes, and that's what it's all about. Look at these guys right here. Yeah, you don't want to mess with these guys. Yes. I mean, look, <laughs> look at these guys right here, man. Oh, this is gonna this is gonna get intense. Oh man. So it's like more of like wrong place, wrong time for our hero. Yeah, and it's he very simple premise. Yeah, this is great. But the thing is, that's how I realize now with oh with, look at that. Uh, with a lot of successful films in Hollywood now, a simple premise like The Extractions or John Wick, and it's just how they 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 attack it in a different way and yeah. how they uh, transform it to make it uh, looks new and original. Oh, yeah. That's it. That's what it's all about. That's what it's yeah. all about for sure. But right here, look at this beautiful gore effects, practical effects there. Now, see, this is where I was going crazy in the trailer here. Yeah. <laughs> Not just because of the beautiful, wonderful gore gore effects, but once I saw him dual wield, <laughs> once I saw him dual wielding, I was like, oh, shit. Yes. I was like, I um, love it. I think uh, uh, it's nice that you've noticed it. In this particular scene, uh, I said to Erwin, this is just like a fun boy thing to us. Uh, there's no logic to it anymore. Just let just throw all the ideas in the window, and I just want it a berserk kind of feel. Yeah, that we just like get this two automatic rifle and the shotgun and just like burst it and all throw away the logic. We just yeah. need to suspend our disbelief here because it's an action scene, and action scenes must be attacked like how fun boys really attack it. So it's like how. In John McTiernan's Predator, when they first encountered the uh, the Predator in the middle of the jungle, where everyone is just like burst, and then yeah. you have Jesse Jesse Ventura just uh, pick up the 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 Gatling gun and just like burst it somewhere else, and everyone just like burst it 
yeah, yeah, everywhere. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So it's just like for me, it's just like a testosterone thing. It's just like flexing it. It's just yeah. like releasing it. Uh, the the whole energy to it. Yeah. Well, it's just it's just fun, like you said. It's a yes, it's yes, fun yes, to yes. watch. Yeah, it's fun to watch and it's fun to, to see your hero do that, man. I mean, yeah, I think Chayun Fat did that in Better Tomorrow Three. Yeah. I think he had two automatic rifles and he was shooting them at the same time. It's just it's just a good time, man. That's what it's all yeah. about. Having I think fun. I think uh, I I just really realized that doing an action films, most especially action stuff. I think the the fun part should be there. I think yeah. the fun part should be there. Uh, yeah. the, 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 the wide eye little boy in you. Exactly. I think, I think that's very most important rather than be more technical about it. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yes. yeah. Sometimes, or for me, it works. For me, oh, it yeah. works. The, the, sure. Having that uh, fun, that excitement, that, mm -hmm. that enjoyment, that uh, WWE moment. You know, where you just like suspend your disbelief. Yeah. I, I've been like always telling a whole lot of people that uh, I can always say to myself that uh, I'm not a filmmaker, but I'll be a fanboy at heart. I, I just, <laughs> I just, I just know, I just know the films that I want to do and yeah. where the fun part uh, is. So exactly. I just enjoy it. I just enjoy the, the, the roller coaster ride of it. There you go. That's 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 perfect. The roller coaster ride. Here's a here's a great example. Uh, everybody watching, if you can't suspend your disbelief and have fun sometimes, then don't even bother watching Commando. Exactly. <laughs> and, the, and with Commando, I love it. I love Commando. I love Commando. Yeah. I love Commando. I could like sit down now with Commando, and most yes. especially the time that uh, Ray Don Chong. Asked him, "Where do we go shopping?" And then that's where they, you know get. I, I I still love that moment in films. Yeah, the preparation thing. Yeah, it, it, it's always in awe uh, to see certain kind of uh, what you call this uh, a certain kind of moment in films where uh, you have the trope. The, the, the troop must be yeah. there. The troop must yeah. be there. The preparation thing, mm -hmm. even like the, the trope of having this uh, yeah. head band in your head, yeah. bandage in your head before you go. Yeah. That's always the 80s trope that always excites us. And even right. the trope of Carl Weathers meeting yeah. um, Schwarzenegger for the first time in Predator, and then the, the, the handshake, <laughs> and then John McTiernan just like have this cut in the two <laughs> wrists and then just like trying to uh yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. uh killing to, you son of a bitch you son it's of a bitch so you know? good it's so good so, and i think uh, i think there's, there's an audience today yeah i know i think there's an audience today that misses that yeah, yeah. and i yeah. think john wick nailed it with the tropes so <laughs> there, there's a whole lot of tropes in john wick that opens up a whole lot of ideas again that oh right. well this is something like an o an uh, ode to the 80s even extraction even yeah. extraction to did you, see, did you did you see sisu last year i love sisu see dude sisu could have came out in the 80s yes <laughs> very very simple premise very simple premise but <laughs> the thing is that love is it. something that we are missing the tropes we are missing that yes the, i agree the i agree most especially uh the reinforcement scene that's something that really the reinforcement scene and uh dunham moment where arnold schwarzenegger is trying to run with with this uh the woman because they're running uh escaping the predator and then uh dunham just said go and just like the stand and get his machete and yeah. make uh, the last standoff for Predator. See, that is something that we're really missing, but yeah. that is something. Billy! That... <laughs> and Billy stayed back. Billy yeah. stayed back, was like, fuck it. I'm yeah. just going to go out swinging with my machete. <laughs> yeah, see? Yeah. That is something that we're really missing. And yeah. Yeah. With, with Commando too, yeah. uh, there's a whole lot of uh, uh, wonderful trope in there. 
I mean, yeah, the body count is just... With the, the, the standoff uh, uh, with Billy Duke. Yeah, that's a yeah. great fight. I, I, I ate green berries for breakfast, you know, yeah. and the, the fight scenes, the, the double cuts and all. Yeah. That, 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 that's awesome. Yeah. So what, I, what I'm saying is you need to be a, a fanboy of this, of this era, of this genre. Yes. In order for you to come up with something that uh, something special for your uh, own uh, right. projects. Yeah. Well, luckily, you know, we we have uh, creative people like you bringing this type of content back. Yeah. And uh, let's keep it going here, man. What was uh, was uh, our lead here? He did. He just went all gun gung ho. Was he yeah. more nervous with the action, or he was just like, "Fuck it, I'm going in." Ah uh, yeah, uh, the the way we shoot it, what's amazing about it because our our actor here, which is Arjo Artaide, he's just so comfortable with live squibs and explosions because here, I think hundred percent live. The sparks, the explosions in the background, and all the body squibs, those were all live, live, oh, wow. live effects. So there's a possibility that you might going to. Uh, be hit in the eyes or in the skin and my lead actor here uh, who is Julia Montes who is uh, an amazing actress also here and she did a whole lot of stunts um, All right. on her own nice in fact when he crawled in this scene he crawled to run he, she realized that she got nailed in her knees that uh, struck her knees. Mm. Yeah, a nail. So we just realized that, oh, there's something painful in my knees until we realized there's a nail that really... Uh, oh my God. In her knees. And he just like pulled it off and he said, no, let's continue the scene. Let's continue this. Uh, we still have that momentum. So, oh, she's she's badass. Oh, uh, yeah. Nice. Yeah. You, 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 uh, when the movie will going to come out, you're going to realize what what she made her because again again yeah. uh for my actress here i said to her i want you to be more you're not a martial artist you're right, you're, right. you're not a martial artist here you're not good with uh, with guns and all but you have the heart to survive gotcha. so meaning just do your thing just just pour it all out there's a whole lot of blood there's a whole lot of brutality and uh, I think uh, we're in the right path. And she said, okay, I, I get it. I get it. So nice. an ordinary woman again, like we will not die tonight, but they just want to survive. Right. Yeah, it's a, like you said, it's a different different script, different character. Uh, she just wants to survive. She's not yeah. a, she's not a, you know, a badass yet. Yeah. And badass in real life. Yeah. You know, taking the knee, yeah. taking the nail in the knee and keep filming. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, but this is awesome, man. Let's keep it rocking and rolling here, man. Let's go. I love that. I mean, there's some more tropes here, man. Look at that. What are you? <laughs> Look yeah. at these the dialogue. I love it, man. Yeah. And oh man, uh, who did you have to do the amazing uh practical gore effects? Mm. Um most especially with the blood design, because the blood oh. design is very essential. Again, the blood design, it, it must be like shot in that way. And the blood oh, design man. should be more, more uh, compelling and real. So I'm the one who's, I'm the one who's performing all the blood designs in there. I was in the floor and I created my own uh, blood design gadget so that it's just going to burst anywhere. So. Nice. I'm going to send it to you the 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 design of it so that okay. you can see. Yeah, I can send okay. it to you uh, one of these days. Sure. How, how, so I just like made a homemade gadget for blood burst and blood designs because Beautiful. I want. It. And we even have my production design team. We even have studies the density and the weight of the blood for blood that's been uh, cut off. And the blood that's been like uh, uh, thrown out, so there's a different density and a different weight for the blood, so that okay. it would look it would look real. Wow! So, yeah, the rest, uh, hundred percent 
the whole blood is uh, original. That's amazing. That's amazing. Yeah. But man, there was this right here, this shot right here. Boom. Yeah. Like that is crazy, man. Oh man. Didn't go too, didn't go too well for his buddy there. Oh my goodness. And he's, he still has a little bit of that PTSD, you know, still, yes. he still did. And this is another thing that is really important. And I, I always champion it is I, I always love it when our heroes are, are, are badasses. Um, they all the best heroes always go through something. Yes, there's always something they have to overcome. There's a there's a a small vulnerability there. There's a weakness or something they have to overcome, which makes them a hero. You know, where they they whether they're, they're they're amazing martial artists, but then they come up they come across a guy better than them, and they get their asses kicked, and they have to think of a way to overcome. Yeah, right. Or there's something of their past they have to deal with. Right. These 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 are always uh, important because the last thing you want is a completely invulnerable <laughs> hero that can't get hurt, who can destroy everyone easily. And then the movie's over and you're kind of like, well, that happened. Uh, but the best, the best heroes always have some adversity to overcome and the most memorable ones as well. Look at, look at uh, here, here. I got to go back to predator again. <laughs> I gotta go back to Predator again. Look at Dutch. Yeah. Dutch was this amazing badass leader. And look at him by the end. He is literally running. He is crawling away from the Predator. And then he had to think of a way to defeat him. Yeah. That's why Dutch is one of the greatest action heroes of all time. I truly um, believe. Um I, I truly believe the vulnerability of the character. Because if you look at John McTiernan's John McLean, that's right. how that's how Die Hard changed the whole premise of our action heroes. Right. When they when they presented something that's very familiar, a common guy who defied the odds because of his wits, mm -hmm. because of his strength, because of his uh, heart, but not because of his expertise. Or because of his um, uh, uh, extraordinary powers, but yeah. because he just want to really uh, outdo everyone. Yeah. Uh, determination. Uh, yeah. Determination. Yeah. So John McClane, and it's a different, it's a different level of characterization also. Yeah. And then you, and then came Martin Riggs. Martin yes. Riggs of yes. Lethal Weapon. Uh, you have this gang ho loose cannon type of guy, but you know he's very sensitive. Mm -hmm. uh, you know that. So all of this has been like uh, been drafted already. All of these characters, and it's just how we realize and uh, studied it, and how come these characters became iconic and work exactly. Yeah, yeah. And uh, you can even throw Murtaugh in there. You know, old, yeah. past his prime. Yeah. Yeah, you yeah. know, slow. I mean, you yeah, can even throw him in He had to overcome, too. Even the gun. He's not, like, using any automatic pistol there, but it's just, like, the old 357. Old school. Uh, Six-rounder, old school. Yeah. <laughs> Diplomatic immunity. Yeah. And I, I, love the, the I love the scene in Lethal Weapon 1. The standoff just happened in the backyard or in the front yard. Yeah. With with, with uh, uh, garden hose, uh, garden hose uh, yeah. spreading. So I think that's very imaginative because yeah. they could always. I think Richard Donner could like end the scene in a warehouse or in something spectacular scene. Right. But it becomes uh, domesticated in the end. Yeah. They just like fight it off. In the middle of the suburbia, suburbia neighborhood, right out in the front, and that's where I realized that it was like done 1988 or 89, and then that's where I realized just like uh, like a year ago, and I said to uh, Erwin Tagli, my fight choreographer, because he's a BJJ guy, he's okay. like a, a, a jujitsu guy, nice. and then you realize that in Lethal Weapon. They already use the jujitsu fighting skills in in the end. Yeah, with Gary Busey. that's that's really jujitsu. And so yeah. I said, "Wow, jujitsu has already been there, and we just like didn't notice it." Yeah, 
Yeah. I yeah. think he put him in an arm bar. Yeah, he he, he arm bar, he arm bar <laughs> there in the in, in the in the lawn. So yeah. wow, that's that that's really perfect. That's ahead of its time. That's where I realized that. Yeah, yeah, because UFC, UFC, the first UFC yeah. was was what 92, 93 yeah. or something like that. So yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's oh. how amazing the filmmakers, if they like really uh yeah. Blown out their imagination. You're making and me want to go back and watch all of these movies right now. Right yeah. <laughs> and of course, the running scene. The, the back, running scene, back to Trigger. We got to get Gibson. That's really amazing. Yeah. We got to get back to Trigger, though, man. But uh, oh, this looks so good. He's arming up. Look at that. Get It's, te it's, it's tequila, baby. Yeah. Yeah. They're in trouble. They are in trouble. Let's go. Boom. Look at that. Beautiful explosions. Head expo the bl uh, blood. Look at it. Like I can't even keep up. I think this is where I screamed. Yeah. <laughs> I screamed during the trailer reaction. Like right here. I was like, oh my God. <laughs> there she is. She's kicking ass too. Yes. Yeah. Oh, this is phenomenal, man. <laughs> so good. Wait, oh, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. Was that a flamethrower? Yes, a flamethrower. We have a flamethrower in this movie too, guys. Yeah, again, it's just about fun. Because this I said, is amazing. in this particular scene, I said to everyone that if we're going to end this in a, another another uh, gunfight scene, yeah. it's not going to be remarkable already. So since that we're in the warehouse and we establish already that Everything here is in flame and flammable and all. So let's throw away again our suspension and disbelief and our main villain here, which is amazing too. His name is Sid Lucero. Nice. Just like pick up an, an old flamethrower here and just end the fight with, with like burning everyone in there. So oh, that's it. It worked. It. it worked. That's live. And we can. This is one like live with with CGI because we cannot put the fire the fire yeah. in front. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah. Right. It still looks great though. Yeah. Thank you. Oh my goodness. Because sometimes you use the CGI muzzle flashes in in other movies. You'll see them in other movies and they don't look right. But it looks good here. It looks great here. Look at him. Look at this guy. Yeah. Man. Look at arms got <laughs> arms getting ripped off. Ceiling fan death. I mean, what else? Look at she's getting on it. I mean, this is this is so good. <laughs> now, now, is this a little bit uh, lethal weapon inspired? Yeah, that's really lethal weapon, and it's really like my homage with lethal weapon. The the refreshing thing with the water. Yeah, fighting yeah, in the, the rain. The, yeah, the, the the refreshing thing with all the the chaos inside the warehouse, the dark, the gloomy, the fire, and all. And this is very intentional. That we really wanted to bring the fight in the end outside with gloomy feel and yeah. rain. So even if like you're watching them, you know it's going to be painful and hard and all. But the, it's it's kind of a refreshing thing for us for the standoff and for the finale. Oh, so yeah, okay. this is very again this is very Martin Riggs. So again, in my films, it's a whole lot of hodgepodge of inspirations i just really love to uh pay homage to to yeah everything that i but watch I, I, it. I hate to cut you off here but is he trying to stab him with his own bone actually he's trying to punch him but my lead character uh outnumbered him by by cracking his hands so the bones like came out okay Oh, that's crazy, man. Yeah, the bone Love came it. out. I thought he was trying to hit him with the bone, but this, this <laughs> is amazing. <laughs> Triggered, baby. Oh, yeah. Coming soon from Raven Banner. Yeah. Yeah, that's what it's all about, man. I'm excited. I am so excited. I'm sure everybody watching right now, I'm sure you are excited. Hold on. <laughs> yeah, Kevin thought, he thought the same thing I thought. That he's trying to get stab him with his own bone. Yeah. Um, <laughs> it all works. It all works. Uh, but yeah, chat's excited. Look at this right here. We got uh, John. He'll give them. A, he'll give them a war. <laughs> a war they won't believe. <laughs> yeah. uh, we got the thumbs up from Brandon. John oh, Bonnie's you. throwing up the flames. Uh, let's see. There was some other ones here. Hold on. He goes. Um, he's, I really have to see this. Looks like it's got everything 
Yes. We're looking for Brandon says badass. So yeah, chat is excited as well as as me, man. Let's 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 fucking go, man. That's how we do it here. We're excited. We this is what it's all about. We love these types of films. Yeah. And the more, the merrier these type of movies, especially in this day and age. Uh, let's go get more of these movies. Bring all the filmmakers together and all the fanboys. Yes. Put them together and make some movie magic, which is triggered. So, yeah, I can't wait. Now, uh, some people were asking earlier, when is this coming out? Do you want to uh, kind of remind everybody how, how this works? Okay. Uh, so, our distributor, which is uh, Raven Banner, uh, I think this year uh, they really have like a roadmap. They have a roadmap for international releases and most especially U.S. release. But we're going to announce the date uh, yet because okay. uh, it needs to have a whole lot of um, arrangements still. But yes, rest assured that uh, Trigger will still gonna uh, go in that uh, that route because uh, Raven Banner and my main producer Nathan Studio made it all possible last year because uh, we 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 had our uh, premiere in Cannes and also in Locarno and we were in Texas just like uh, September. We Dude, were in can, Austin. That's amazing. Congratulations. Yeah. Cannes we everywhere. Austin. Yeah, we were in Look Austin. That. Yes. That is amazing. Congratulations. Yeah. Congratulations on so that. I well, stay tuned. I more, than, more than likely it'll be this year. I think the release will be uh, this year for the whole uh u.s uh territory nice uh all platforms digitally dvd blu-ray or yes, mostly yes, just yes, digitally yes, yes. yes okay nice you know we're gonna you know we're gonna we're gonna watch it digitally we're gonna buy it on blu-ray because we support physical media over here yeah. as well uh but yeah i am definitely excited I could talk to my brother over here, Richard, all day about uh, cinema, but he's an extremely busy man. <laughs> I got to let him go. Uh, but Richard, it was an honor. Thank you, sir. Again. No, oh, it was an. Uh, it's a really an honor to share such insights, and uh, it's kind of really, really uh, amazing for us to share yeah. uh, our very own film to have this uh, in a. In a in a global stage, I think uh, this is the way to go, and it's still humbling that uh, we still have this energy to share this to everyone. Oh yeah, that's what it's all about: talking yes. movies, talking about what we love, yeah. sharing it, spreading the word, getting it out there. That's what the Movie Dojo Podcast is all about, and that's my job. That's right, a job Thank that you. I love doing. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> uh, but uh, Richard, anything you'd like to say to your followers before we wrap it up? Ah, yeah. Um, let's continue to support uh, this kind of films because um, it, it means a lot to us, all of us, the inspirations, the, the love for action movies, and most especially the, the ones that truly inspired us as we continue to um, discover uh, such uh, beautiful and simple stories all over the world. Yes, well said. Very well said. Richard, And hey, it's like we tell all our awesome guests that we have on here. This is your second home, brother. You're always welcome to come Anytime. back. That's and right. Most especially with a whole lot of updates with, yes. with Trigger and also with uh, up-and-coming films. I'll be glad to share it again with you and yeah. have a whole lot of sure. insightful talks and uh, share conversation. That's right. He's going to be a regular. He's going to be a regular here. That's of course, right. He of is course, welcome. Of course. Uh, Richard, don't go anywhere. But all you badasses out there, thanks again for watching. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to the old samurai guy. Check the link in the description box below. Make sure you follow Raven Banner, the banner of badassity, on Instagram. Follow Richard on Instagram as well. Continue to follow him on his fanboy filmmaking journey. <laughs> and uh, we'll see all you guys on the next one. Richard, don't go anywhere. But you guys take care. And don't forget, tomorrow I'm going to have another Amazing filmmaker. We're going to continue talking action films here on the podcast tomorrow at 6 p.m. Pacific. Oh, excuse me, 5 p.m. Pacific time tomorrow. Take care, guys. See you on the next one.